So, President Obama speaking a short time ago about the Orlando terror attack, taking aim at the GOP and specifically Donald Trump. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for President of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. We hear language that singles out immigrants and suggests entire religious communities are complicit in violence. Where does this stop? Joining me now, Simon Rosenberg, former Clinton campaign advisor and president and founder of NDN, and Larry O'Connor, host of Mornings on the Mall on WMAL Radio and editor-at-large for HotAir.com. Uh, speaking of hot air, uh, or at least angry <laughs> air, uh, Simon, <laughs> President Obama was, was very angry today. I, I did think, though, that he was very passionate, and, and I would think that a lot of his supporters were probably wondering, like, why didn't he do this before? What would you think? <laughs> Listen, I, I think the thing that's been most striking to me as somebody who, after 9-11, supported George Bush, as many Democrats did, in establishing the war on terror and going to Afghanistan, I was very supportive of the war in Iraq, how the Democrats rallied to support their president in a time of crisis and how different the response has been from Donald Trump. I mean, the day after the attack in Orlando, Donald Trump attacked the president of the United States, said he should resign, used over-the-top language. Well, this is a time where we should be coming together and working together to solve these problems and not okay. playing to the worst kind of politics here. And I'm very disappointed in the way that Donald Trump has handled this issue in the okay, last few Okay, but the, days. Flip, the flip side of the president's huh. speech today, Larry, was that, yeah. you know, a lot of people said, well, it's not a time to be taking shots against Donald Trump, too, and maybe he should have been talking more about the victims. Uh, so there's kind of two sides to this story, is there not? Well, yeah, yeah, there is. And you said, you know, maybe the president's supporters are wondering why he wasn't angry like this in the past against Donald Trump. As an American citizen, neither a Republican nor a Democrat at this moment, I'm wondering why the president isn't this angry at the terrorists. <laughs> he never shows this kind of passion and anger against ISIS and the people inspired by that group who are slaughtering our people, our innocent law-abiding citizens. And I'm sorry, Simon, that you're disappointed in Donald Trump for not banding together with Barack Obama. But let me tell you the difference between Obama and Bush. Bush was president for seven months when 9-11 happens. This president has been in office for seven years, and his non-existent right. strategy against the terrorists, in fact, the war on terror that you supported, your candidate and this president completely dismantled. So, and, and one other thing, I think this president, the day, after, the day after the attacks, this president decided that his big message that he wanted everyone in the country to rally around was a dismantling of American citizens' rights to defend themselves with a firearm. I'm sorry that you're disappointed I, that Republicans won't rally behind no, no, that. I, I, but I just, I'm want, glad they I just want to interject. Can I interject just one fact, right? Is that since 9 11, there has not been one foreign fighter terrorist attack on the homeland of the United States. And the homegrown terrorism that we've seen recently are very different from what happened in 9 11. And I just want to, I want to go what's, on record. What's the difference though when people are dead? Are what's the difference no, when people die? No, no, there's a, big, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. And let me explain why. And I want to praise our security forces, the military, our law enforcement for going this length of time preventing anyone from coming abroad into the United States and attacking us. How we deal Sam now Bernardino? with homegrown Sam terrorism Bernardino? with American citizens. Larry, let me finish. Larry, let me finish. Is that if how we deal with homegrown terrorism, it's a completely different thing. And let's acknowledge that our government has done a remarkable job over 15 years in keeping the bad guys out of the country. What we're dealing with now is people who are homegrown and affiliated with ISIS. That's right. a different problem. Well, so let's acknowledge glad, the gains and progress we've made, I'm, and I'm, let's deal with this. I'm glad yeah. you're acknowledging the people who are working hard, including members yeah. of the military. But I'm not yeah. so sure that we can always put President Obama in that same statement. Uh, let's I'm, move on to this, though. But, what but, was to be, the um, woman who this is supposed Americans to be a moment of silence, Bernardino guys. Was born in Saudi Arabia. Okay, guys, I need you to be silent just for a second so we can get to the second topic. There All was right, supposed sorry. to be a moment of silence for the Orlando victims, but it turned into a walkout on Capitol Hill. Watch this. The chair asks that the House now observe a moment of silence in memory of the victims of the terrorist attack in Orlando. Okay, but some lawmakers shouted at House Speaker Paul Ryan as they were leaving the chamber. They're demanding action on gun control in the wake of the Orlando massacre. Now you can see three lawmakers actually walking out of the chamber. Then you hear the shouts from the floor as Speaker Ryan tries to gavel back to business. Up to amend the High Performance Convening Act of 1991 to authorize activities for support 
of networking and information technology. So the disruptors yelling, where's the bill? Where's the bill? They're referring to legislation calling for tighter gun regulations. Amid all the shouting, a testy exchange between the speaker and assistant Democratic leader Jim Clyburn. I am really concerned that we have just today uh, had a moment of silence and later this week, the 17th, is the gentleman we stating a parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Mr. Speaker, I am particularly interested about three pieces of legislation that have been filed in response to The gentleman's not sitting a parliamentary inquiry. The bill is amended. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. Larry, do the people who walked out have a point that these mass shootings continue to happen and, and nothing changes on Capitol Hill? Uh, one of the single greatest fundraising issues for Democrats is gun control. And they're going to do whatever they can to draw attention to themselves and make it look like they're fighting. And the Americans actually recognize what they're doing. They're trying to infringe on our individual and constitutional rights. That's why they're doing this, because they can raise money off it. Simon? It's cynical and sad. Yeah, I think there are two things Republicans could do with the Democrats right away. One is to, the Republicans should vote to give the president the authority to conduct the military action in the Middle East that he's taking now, which they've refused to do for a year and a half. They claim they want to fight the bad guys over there, give the president the legal authority to do so. And second is, on a very narrow issue around guns, let's allow and make sure that if you're on the terror watch list that you can't buy guns in the United States. I think those two things are things that Paul Ryan yeah. could do right away to show bipartisan commitment. They're not controversial, and we can get them done in the next few All weeks. Right. Imagine bipartisanship. Hmm. Uh, I, I think you guys have to kiss and make up too, okay? Simon. He's too and far Larry. away in California. <laughs> All right. Take care. <laughs>